Hi everyone, welcome back to our podcast from the Kama Sutra to 2020, where we talk about all things to do with sexuality. Today I have with me Sachi Malhotra. Sachi is not just a really good friend, but she is also the founder of That Sassy Thing, which if you haven't heard of it, you need to go and check it out immediately. It's a new age sexual wellness brand and it literally offers you everything that you're ever going to need when it comes to your pleasure. And also physical hygiene, uh, intimate health, and so on, right? Hi, Sachi. Welcome. Hi, Seema. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure to be, you know, talking to you about all things. I mean, everything. I think I can't just say like all things sex, but like life in general. So I'm just really excited to be here. It's it's so good of you to have found the time for us, Sachi, because today I want to talk to you about sex toys in particular. We get lots of questions about sex toys. Everything from how do you clean them to how do you buy them to how do you store them to what do you do with them? There are people who have concerns about the fact that they've never used one but would like to. I mean, there's just it's still pretty much a a hidden subject, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think like um, I feel like India is still new to the idea of sex toys and we get so many questions, I would say, on a daily basis. We are flooded, uh, you know, with them in our DMs, uh, on WhatsApp, everywhere. Um, so definitely, I think a lot of people, you know, need that education in a way because I feel like we've not been really educated about our bodies, right? So I think pleasure is kind of like the next step. We need to kind of understand our anatomy first, um, you know, understand how our body functions. And then uh, it's almost like a journey in a way. So, So I think... Definitely a lot of people are just, you know, getting to know about sex toys and like the world of sex toys because it's it's huge, right? There's so many different types of them. One um, may work for someone and might not work for another people because pleasure looks very different for different bodies as well. Um, so yes, definitely like loads of questions around them. I think uh, before I launched the brand, I had so many questions myself which uh, I still do, I think, as we go about this journey of launching, you know, every new toy. Um, so it's it's really exciting. But I do also understand, I think, for a lot of people who don't know about sex toys or, you know, haven't really explored themselves, explored their bodies, could find it intimidating as well. Um, so as a brand, we always put sex ed at the forefront and, you know, educate people about their bodies, about, um, of course, our different products as well, and uh, really try to make it I would say really approachable and friendly and like not make it intimidating for them. Wonderful. So I have a million questions for you literally, and I'm not sure where to even start, but let's begin with the first thing, which is that um, you just mentioned you have so many different types of sex toys. I know that a lot of people who write in say that they would like to try something, but they're a little bit scared about penetrating with something they um they are not sure how to use a sex toy do we have options yeah um so of course there are toys that you can penetrate with but also there are toys you don't have to penetrate with as well uh and i think like that also speaks to i would say like how you know the bodies work especially for women in a way right like there's a lot of research and a lot of data around this as well. Around 80% of women don't come through penetration alone and do need some form of clitoral stimulation as well. So I think clitoral stimulation is something that's very, um, I would say a lot of people don't know about it. I think still uh, it's underrated as well, because I think you can, a lot of people can really experience pleasure through clitoral stimulation alone as well. Um, so on that topic, we do actually have two toys that are clitoral stimulators. I kind of have them right here. So this one's called uh, Lit and this is powered by suction tech. So the little mouth that you see here, that acts like a vacuum and it sucks the clitoris and that's how you feel pleasure. Um, so again, this is something that you use externally and you don't have to penetrate, you know, like using this. Hence, um, a lot of people who, let's say, have never used a sex toy before, um, but do want to experience, you know, an orgasm or experience pleasure without being penetrated with. Uh, prefer using this for their first time as well. So let's explain to our viewers and our listeners, would you put that on the outside of the labia, on the outside of the lips, or would you put it just inside the lips? I would say, I think, again, like different things work for different people. So you, you know, kind of try out, uh, you know, like what works for you. Uh, but yeah, if you put it slightly inside the lips and, you know, like, um, you know, have it touch the clit as well, 
uh, then the suction itself is something that is is really powerful that you can you know feel it has five different uh, speeds as well so you go at your own pace and see what works uh, and in fact a lot of people don't just use it for the clit some people also you also use it for the uh, you know on their nipples as well um so think about it you know in terms of uh, another erogenous zone that kind of protrudes out um this sucks that like literally uh, so a lot of people experience pleasure that way as well and i just want to come in over here and say that as sachi said you can actually use it on the nipples and no just because you use a suction toy on the nipple it doesn't mean that your nipples are going to start sagging it's not going to change the shape of your nipples i think that's another thing sachi that people have a lot of fear about that if they penetrate if they use a toy somewhere whether it's real sex with uh, real sex meaning with another yeah. person or whether it's uh, with a toy that's one of the things that people have a lot of fear around that it's going to change the shape of their body yeah and uh, you know like um, absolutely a lot of questions that we come across also kind of speak to that where uh, you know people have would have concerns around would my clit become really loose for example you know if i'm using a clitoral stimulator would it damage it in some way um so so 100% i'm glad you clarified that uh, you know uh, all together because i think that's those are some natural questions to have because as i said like i think sex toys are not very mainstream still um you know in india compared to other parts of the world um so i think it's important that we clear these misconceptions as we go as well but also that, Seema, one more point i want to like i think clarify is that a lot of people also asks us uh, sorry ask us if this vibrates it's not a vibrator there's a difference between a vibrator and you know um, a a massager different kind of massager so this as i said uh, it's the suction that works to you know suck the clitoris it doesn't vibrate so there's a difference between the two which is kind of important to clarify um okay well. that's interesting yeah um what about like something that is just a vibrator but you don't yeah. have to penetrate yeah so we have this little guy we call this salty this is again another clitoral stimulator why salty because it's uh, super <laughs> discreet it looks like a salt cellar yeah that's what the name is inspired by and it's a discreet looking toy right like if it's kept let, let's say you know on your study table or on your nightstand you can't really make out what this is it can pass off as a paperweight um, you know or almost like a salt cellar as i said so this is something uh, that you can you know you can use the head and this vibrates so this you can use as a vibrator but like you know think about it as rubbing the clitoris and you know that's how you can kind of uh, experience pleasure this is really powerful um it has 10 different uh, vibrations which is basically a combination of you know speeds and frequencies that you can kind of explore so you see what works best for you in that sense you know a lot of girls would write in to me and say that the only way that they can still come is if they uh, clench their thighs together if they squeeze their thighs together i yeah. think it's the regular way that a lot of women particularly tend to find their orgasms and i think this particular one salty if you hold it yeah. up again is yeah. fantastic because you could actually put that between your legs while yeah. you're squeezing it you you could actually put it against your labia and when you squeeze your legs it kind of does the work of both and i think that would be yeah. pretty amazing as well yeah absolutely yeah. you can go hands free also in a way yeah, you know you can go hands free as well so um that's fantastic for outside stuff um what about something that you can penetrate with as well do you have something to show our audiences that yeah, something that is your particular like, uh, favorite i'm ready with it <laughs> so uh, this is called og because um you can you know like use it as a g spot stimulator so this is for penetration and for external stimulation um now this the head that you see here that's something that you penetrate with uh, i'm also clarifying that because uh, you know as we're talking about the questions that come up uh, you know like in terms of what customers have queries around Uh, a lot of people don't know which side to penetrate with so it's really important to clarify that as well the head is something that you penetrate with um and you can use it as an external clitoral stimulator as well it is super bendy so you can you know um insert it in and kind of um you know like explore in in your own way this is a great toy for partnered sex as well um because you can penetrate with it uh, also this has 10 different you know um, settings again like speeds and frequencies so whatever works uh, for each one and whatever floats your boat 
So just put your hand uh, behind the head, put it behind the head so we can get a better idea of what the uh, size yeah. looks like of that. Yeah, yeah. So okay. almost like, so if you see this, like just for heuristics, so almost yeah. like, you know, two fingers like right here. Okay, that's amazing because, you know, when you hold it up just like that, it can look quite intimidating because it does look quite yeah. big on camera. But yeah. since you put your two fingers around it, you can see that yeah. actually that's all it is. And then like, suddenly it becomes non-intimidating. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's the... Okay, wonderful. Now, tell me something for something that like this that you would um, use for penetration. Do you recommend lube? Because we always recommend people use lube with their sex toys. What is your opinion on that? 100%. I think uh, definitely for the one that you are using for penetrative purposes, uh, we have a water-based, you know, all natural uh, loop as well, which uh, is pH balanced. It's unflavored also because flavored lube is really bad for the vagina. It has, um, you know, added sugars that can throw off the pH balance and cause yeast infections even. So we recommend an all natural loop. 100% use a loop with, uh, you know, anything you're penetrating um with and i think generally like lube is just so underrated as a as a product it just i think like makes sex so much more fun <laughs> more than anything else any kinds of sex i think even if you're using uh and you know like a external toy for external clitoral stimulation also um lube will just you know enhance the pleasure in in a lot of ways for a lot of people and and make the whole experience more comfortable as well um we've also designed our lube to really mimic the I would say, um, you know, natural lubrication of the vagina as well. So it doesn't feel like, you know, you're literally adding something on and um, like something artificial or something external to the body in that sense. Um, and another thing that we really kept in mind was that the whole experience while using a loop, like not just while you're using it, but like the after usage is also really, I would say, seamless and not messy. Because when it came to a lot of, um, you know, mass market lubricants that we tried out and, you know, did our research on, they felt really sticky and goopy and, you know, felt almost like you had to take a shower and it would still not come off after using it. So we wanted to make the whole experience really mess-free and like non-icky in that sense. And um, yeah, I think our lube does a, does a good job through and through in that sense. Coming now to a really sticky point. A lot of people have a problem ordering things like this. You know, if you live in um, joint families or even if you're not in a joint family, if you live with your parents, I know how many parents will go into their kids' rooms just to tidy up the rooms. Yeah. And that is an issue, you know, like so between ordering them to somebody's house where, you know, somebody's going to check um, a parent, an elder was going to check, you know, like what did you get today? Um, to actually storing them uh, yeah. where they're not going to be found. Mm -hmm. What is, I mean, these are real challenges for people. Uh, what do you recommend or what do you have in place that can work around that? Yeah, so I mean, uh, just when it comes to, you know, uh, shipping, first of all, like, let's say, I think, let me just take a step back, right from when you order on our website, which is that sassy thing.com. When you order on our website, you... Um, when you're, you know, on paying through, let's say a credit card, uh, your bank statements won't have the name of our brand mentioned. It'll be the name of the registered company mentioned. So no one can really make out, you know, where you really placed an order from in that sense. And um, then when we move on to the next step in the consumer journey, which is you've placed your order, you're waiting to get your order. Um, you only receive the shipping updates on the phone number that you entered in the order, which is, I'm assuming your personal number. Uh, when you get the order, we actually ship in 100% discrete packaging. Now, what that means is that the outer shipping carton, it will not have the name of the brand, that sassy thing mentioned, nor will it have the name of the product mentioned. So it's not going to say, um, you know, Seema ordered uh, OG <laughs> vibrator from that <laughs> sassy thing. So in that sense, it's discrete because we also understand, you know, cultural nuances. We understand women's safety also. That's really important as well to us as a brand. Um, so all that has been, you know, very well thought out uh, in terms of the whole consumer journey. 
Now we also give um, a storage pouch with uh, each product. I do understand that, you know, that might not uh, help a lot of people, but I think that's from a, uh, also from a perspective that you should not leave your toys out because you shouldn't really expose them to dust or any, you know, I would say, um, I would say like unwanted particles, you know, floating around in the air in that sense. So, so it's um, like a dust bag almost. Uh, yeah, so it's basically something that's lint free and it's a cotton bag that we give along with it each purchase. Um, I just want to say that, you know, anytime you buy a really nice expensive bag or an expensive yeah. jewelry, yeah, uh, expensive piece of jewelry, it'll come in a dust pouch. It'll come yeah, in a yeah. dust bag. Yeah, yeah. People have to learn to treat their sex toys in exactly the same way. It has to come in a dust pouch and you keep it in a yes. nice dust pouch. Right, right. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I mean, I understand, you know, about those prying eyes. So I think one way to kind of help that situation from, you know, people uh, not finding out your sex toys is ordering discreet sex toys. I think that helps. So as I said, this one little um, salty over here is super discreet in that sense. Uh, this one can pass off as a face massager <laughs> as well or a forehead kiss <laughs> simulator. Mm -hmm. Just kidding. But yeah, like I think you can definitely pass this these two off, um, you know, so we have discrete options available um, because we do understand, you know, the apprehensions that people have in mind and no one wants their sex toy to be found by, you know, like a sibling or, or parents in that sense. So, yeah, yeah. I, there's a lot of embarrassment um, around that, unfortunately. Absolutely. Yeah. Or find like a sneaky corner and, you know, <laughs> the really, really important question is, how do you actually clean the sex toys so that they stay safe for you to penetrate with? Yeah, absolutely. So when it comes to silicon-based uh, toys slash massagers uh, that are waterproof, um, we recommend using, you know, lukewarm water with a mild soap or body wash, which is silicon-free and, you know, paraben-free as well. Preferably a natural wash, which is really mild, I would say. So it doesn't have, you know, harmful chemicals um, such as the ones I'd mentioned. Um, so, yeah, so I think it's... Do you have any uh, brands that, that like um, generic brands that people can use? I mean, we have actually, a, a, I don't know if you can see this well in the camera, but we have a two-in-one intimate and body wash, which is completely natural. It's free of silicon, uh, free of any parabens, pH balanced also. This is something that, you know, doubles up as a great uh, wash for the massagers as well because it's super mild um, on the body and super mild for the toy as well. Um, so that's something that we recommend to our customers to get as well. I think it's really important uh, to know what you're putting inside the mo one of the most absorbent parts of your body, what's really going inside there. Um, and like, of course, like washing that like really well, I think that's super, super important to avoid any infections or, uh, you know, like be safe in that sense. So basically, lukewarm water and a mild natural soap of some kind yeah, to, or a wash, uh, to wash the toys. Is there any routine for how you wash the toys? I mean, is there a special way of doing it or what would um, you? Yeah, I mean, I think it would be basically you're just, um, you know, literally like putting it under, under the tap. Of course, these should be waterproof as well. So do check with the merchant if the product is waterproof to begin with um, because there are some you know toys that are 100% waterproof some might not be as well depends on the material also so why i mentioned silicon based toys was because those are like i would say more commonly uh, available accessible as well um hence you know keeping that in mind but yeah like when you're washing the toy definitely you know dry it up with a with a like with a towel like a soft towel as well and yes, storage is really important. I think like you would, you know, wash, I would say, um, I mean, of course, washing, the washing part is important, but storage is really important as well, as I stated earlier as well, ensuring that, you know, you're not just leaving it out anywhere uh, out in the open that way. So I think that's that's really important as a step to follow to, to take care of. And it. would you also recommend, I mean, obviously we wash it after you use it. Would you recommend that they wash it before they use it as well? So yes, second time? Absolutely. Yes, do wash it before usage as well. Because again, right, like I think it's easier said than done. I understand that at times that you might have, you know, used it, um, you know, like spontaneously this one one time and then you forget to keep it back in the storage pouch and you just leave it out somewhere. Or, you know, you left it out 
for a while and then you put it back again so i think to be very realistic um we might not be i would say like super conscious in a way about you know how we are storing it of course that's ideal but a lot of times we might not be right so it's always recommended that you wash it before before usage as well so um sachi i think what i'd love to know is what made you start this brand yeah i think that sassy thing is definitely a culmination of my personal and professional experiences um personally i actually like went through a lot of body image issues uh, growing up i um realized that there was no safe space where you could actually have conversations around your body around pleasure um you know i think of course it's been such a taboo like all these years it still is but i think there's so much work that awesome people like you have done to kind of pave the way for brands like us to um you know like follow your footsteps and <laughs> um you know do more work in the space to normalize pleasure to normalize sexual health um but yeah i think beyond that i would say when i actually went to look at products that existed in the market i couldn't really find a lot of products that were good for i would say all people and i think by that i also want to focus on women how women were kind of never represented in a very holistic way um in terms of the products that existed you mostly found flavored lubes at the time when we had launched um which are not good for you know people with vaginas um we spoke about this a little bit earlier already so i don't want to repeat that but also i saw that there was a huge space in the market where there wasn't a brand that was um very friendly very approachable very inclusive almost felt like you know friend you are having a conversation with a lot of people whom we interviewed in i would say the earlier stages of launching that sassy thing came up to us and told us that you know when they went uh, sex toy shopping online it almost felt like they're on the dark web so it felt really intimidating it felt almost sleazy even um so our idea was to really flip that script flip that narrative and bring a brand that was nothing like that it was really friendly it was really fun um, super focused on sex ed as well because we realized there was a huge gap which existed i would say like for all of us we never got any sex ed growing up um it was always about you know girls in one room boys in one room and you get a little bit of information about periods and that's that's it uh there's so much shame around you know all things related to our body so the idea was to really um smash that in the head and really i would say um talk about all things that made one uncomfortable and scream them on the top of our rooftops even um so yeah so i think that's when the idea of that sassy thing came up and um i think my professional experiences also are super linked to this because i worked with sexual wellness brands in india like big sexual wellness brands that i don't want to name uh, back in 2011 i realized how the space felt very misogynistic at that point and um as i said from products to communications to culture it wasn't very inclusive and women were ignored almost you would literally only see you know packets of condoms that had uh, you know women being objectified um so that's all the things that we are trying to change as well and um i also worked on another american sexual wellness brand in my grad school where i was doing a project and realized that the situation was pretty similar this was back in 2016 um again realized that the space was very hyper masculine though i think the sex positive revolution had started uh, you know like permeating in different parts of the us and also started coming to india like much before by that i mean that sexual wellness was more mainstream at that point in the us and not so much in india in terms of culture brands um as well but um, but yeah i think that really pushed me to really you know create that change and have a brand that was refreshing and didn't feel like uh, the sleazy old brands that existed and um we always wanted to do products that were functional fun beautiful discreet and really i would say uh, a brand with a purpose as well so that's why like we put education you know at the forefront of everything that we that we do um and um we also recently launched these online sex ed master classes as well which educate which are free basically and uh, these are something that people can take at the comfort of their home home um they're online and they are uh, essentially courses that we've curated with 
you know, the best sexuality educators in the country. And we talk about all things from gender and sexuality to the basics of sex ed. So we do cover a lot of things around, you know, how to use condoms, um, how to uh, prevent STIs, different forms of protection. We also launched one more on Hindi and English and consent. So the idea is to really build for Bharat and bring more regional languages. Um, in the next month, we are launching one on intimacy after childbirth because mothers are not considered sexual beings to begin with. That's going to be in Tamil and English. So, so yeah, we're really trying very hard to, you know, bring sex ed uh, to more and more people and make it more accessible by, I would say, educating people in different languages as well, because we're a brand that's driven by purpose and um, yeah, doing good is important, I think. <laughs> and I think that um, your uh, also your whole idea of educating people is what drives the focus of your brand. So you also um, have a personal connect with or, or are happy to have a personal connect with your customers so they can actually ring you up and talk to you personally, get your advice. And I think that's just amazing. So you are actually open to people speaking to you about what they should buy and how they should buy it. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think, uh, as I was saying, right, like so many people have like so many questions around what they should be buying and um, depending on their own experiences, right? So for example, if someone wants a toy that they want to use with their partner, what do they get versus someone who has never used a toy before and wants to use something for the first time? Uh, we're always, you know, like there to answer those questions. And um, my team answers those questions. I personally also talk to a lot of customers because I truly believe that when you have a one-on-one -on -one connection, I think that really helps. And that's always best to get like real-time feedback and, and improvise, you know, as well. So, so, yeah. And I think also answer so many of these questions. I find personally that, um, you know, I can talk about a particular subject. Let's say we talk about, um, I don't know, oral sex. Yeah. I can talk about it at length, but everybody who has a question on it, they feel that, you know, their question is different in whichever way they always feel, even if it's answered in that particular thing, everybody always feels that my question is a little bit different and I need personal um, attention for that particular yeah. question. So I just think it's fantastic that you provide that. Um, and for everybody listening out there, I hope that you understand what a big deal that is to be able to talk to someone personally. You cannot always do that with people. Um, talk to somebody for free. Um, and get advice on it before you actually buy the product. And I think that's another reason that makes that Sassy thing very, very special in my eyes. So, um, yeah, I think you provide an amazing service. Thank you so much. Thanks. That really means a lot. And, yeah, I mean, definitely the goal is to, um, I think, make it less intimidating and make it like a regular conversation that we can have, you know. Uh, <laughs> and I think um, to me, it's always about the regular conversations, because even if people disagree with it, even if you say, well, I don't think that's a good idea. So long as we're talking about it, we're normalizing it. Absolutely. By all means, disagree. I don't mind. But talk about it. Say why you disagree and feel free to do so. But talk about it. And I think also the other thing is there have been some generations, like, for instance, in my generation, sex toys were not available in India. Oh, yeah. to very, very few people. Um, they weren't largely available in India. So my generation, if they grew up in India, if they lived there all their lives, they're not used to using them. A lot of people, and I'm talking here about largely women because guys have a different way of being able to self-pleasure. For women, it was either a case of using their fingers or some not very um, good alternatives. So a lot of women just did without because it wasn't something that came to us easily. You know, um, right. I think that that narrative is changing. It's becoming more available. I know that the older generation feels that this is a bad thing because, look, we never did it. And younger people, this is too um, uh, easily available. And, oh, my God, they're doing it. I think that people have to understand that this is a natural instinct. People Absolutely. will experiment. Kids will experiment. If they can't get the safe stuff, they will experiment with the unsafe stuff. Absolutely. I get people trying to experiment with fruit and veg. And we keep saying, don't do that. It's the worst yeah. thing you can do. Yeah. 
But Absolutely. trying to explain that is just so hard. I'm sure. I'm sure. I think it's conditioning also in a way, right? Like, um, I think a lot of times we face that as well, right? Like a lot of people also feel shame after ordering a product also because you've had time to kind of think about it. Um, and then, you know, I think there's this uh, internalized shame and judgment that kind of comes to the picture. So I think a lot of times it's not about log kya kahenge, but it's about what do I think about myself, you know? Um, so, so yeah, so I think normalization is all the more important because we shouldn't judge ourselves for something that's so natural and gives us happiness also, you know, in one way or the other. But I think when it comes to, you know, the point you made about um, older women, so let's say, <laughs> sorry, for us, a lot of women, um, I would say over 45 also buy our products as well. Um, you know, so so I think we are also starting to have a conversation, not just amongst the millennial generation, but going beyond that also, um, which I think really, I think pushes me and motivates me and really drives me in that sense as well. Like, how can we really make pleasure accessible and normal for more and more people, um, you know, gender, no bar, age, no bar uh, in that sense. So, so for my 60th birthday, a lot of my friends turned 60 at the same time as I did last year. And um, literally, I said to a bunch of them, I said, OK, I'm getting all of you a toy each to yeah. do with whatever you want. But I'm getting you all a toy so that you at least can say, OK, I had one. Yeah, you know, so you nice. have to have something to be able to discuss and laugh about or whatever. Yeah. And literally, um you have to, I, I cannot tell you how much pushback there was. I mean, some of them were very happy to receive it. The others, I mean, just as a, you know, gag almost like, huh, Tika, this is a bit of a joke. There were some who were really horrified at the idea because pleasure has become a horrific idea over time. So I think just the introduction of sex toys that have nothing to do with um, having a partner, nothing to do with reproduction nothing to do with anything other than pure pleasure yeah. I think that in itself is one of those um it's one of those it, it's a breakthrough put it that way you know and I think that for a lot of people my age it is a very difficult thing to access that point of because course. pleasure has never been in their vocabulary you know, sex with their partners, they might love their partners still, they're still with them, but sex with their partners has never been enjoyable enough for them to feel that they should carry on. For a lot of them, they stop by a certain time. It's like, like, also, no? like, I feel like how it's also, I mean, communicated to you, it's almost like it's your responsibility, like it's a duty to, you know, fulfill your partner for lack of a better term. But I think that's what makes it really like, kind of detach it from the fun and like the as you said the pleasure and something that gives you ultimate joy like that aspect um and just you know, for yourself you know yourself. like yeah, yeah. that's Absolutely. just um it's a very it's just as a concept it is such a difficult thing to grasp that i think the physicality of it comes later so yeah, well done think, for doing what sorry. you're doing i thank you so much but there was an instance that kind of came up uh, when you said that um, I'm also found educating my mom's friends about this because they're all very curious suddenly about sex toys and um, some of them bought some as well. So I think that conversation <laughs> is happening slowly. Uh, and we also have some customers who would buy them for their mothers, for example, you know, like that's another uh, breakthrough as I would like to put it um, also. So I think the conversation is going and, you know, like I think transcending different generations in that sense as well. And we're just hoping we can create more and more of an impact as we as we go. You will. I think you absolutely will. One last question before we finish the um, the conversation. How affordable are your products? Because I think that's one of the other questions that comes up quite often. Um, yeah. So I would say the average price of, you know, our um, toys would be... Um, around like uh, 3400 that would be like the average price point so we have okay. like you know we have uh, this one which is like 3599 and um, this one because it's dual internal and external stimulation this is 4599 and uh, the discrete clitoral stimulator that's um, i would say lesser in price that's 3299 so that's that's how they are priced right now 
um the idea is to definitely you know have toys that can be more accessible that's why we launched you know like this the salty massager that i just showed you in a i would say like more affordable like price point as right. well mm-hmm. yeah yeah and i actually think that that's not a bad price when you consider um the price of general things because this is yes. something that you would buy once so and then you would have it for a, yeah, yeah you would have it for so, a long long time exactly so i think it's that's one thing that you know uh, a lot of people should also kind of consider and think about it as a long term investment as well something that you would you know be using <laughs> using for a while so then it's it's a good deal in that sense and we also have like different uh, you know flexible payment options as well so you can pay in emis on our website and and get them as well so the idea is to make it more accessible through you know giving uh, various payment options to so yeah fantastic and just as um, a, a, a like something to actually mention uh, tell everybody what is your website called yes it's that sassy thing.com t h a t s a s s y t h i n g dot com <laughs> and of course we will put it in the caption but i just wanted everyone to know exactly what it's called so that they can head over to it and as sachi said earlier um there are numbers there are contact details over there for you to reach out to the team talk to anybody that you want to get as much information as you want whether it's about how to buy them whether it's about how to use them whether it's about how to clean them you've got somebody there <laughs> telling you what to do so Absolutely. don't feel like you're alone and having to hide and having to try and figure out don't think that you have to go and ask your friends who probably know as little as you do about something go to the experts find out directly they are available for you and uh, make use of this because this, that doesn't happen very often yeah we don't actually so yeah <laughs> Sachi thank you so much for coming on and doing this I know how many questions we get about it and I know that it's really important rather than me answering them it's better to come from the expert um the person thank who actually creates them and does everything with them so um so you know, if you enjoyed the conversation if you found it useful please do comment like subscribe sachi is there on thatsassything.com with all of the contact details over there you can approach her directly I am on info.seema.anand at gmail.com in case you want to send in more questions. In the meantime, as always, take care of yourself, stay healthy, stay well. Remember, sexual hygiene is your topmost priority because safe sex is the best sex ever. Music